In the spring of 1941, a minister was called out to the scene of a plane crash. He was asked to give the last rites to the pilot and passengers that didn't survive the crash. However, when he arrived, he saw that the aircraft definitely wasn't a plane and the passengers were definitely not human. Hi, I'm Mindy. Welcome to the Missing Link channel. Each urban legend and unsolved mystery is just one missing link away from being solved. I grew up in Kansas City, which is approximately 350 miles away from Cape Girardeau, Missouri, where this event took place. I had never heard of this incident before. I was actually researching the Berkshire UFOs, which occurred in 1969 in Massachusetts, which is the case on the Netflix version of Unsolved Mysteries. I found out that there is a lot more to that incident as well. I plan to do a future video on those UFO sightings. While researching that case, I came across this incident, which took me back to 1941. This event took place before Roswell, which of course is the most well-known UFO case dating back to 1947 in New Mexico. I would definitely love to cover Roswell in a future video as well. But let's go back. Cape Girardeau, Missouri, 1941. Cape Girardeau is located along the Mississippi River, 100 miles southeast of St. Louis, Missouri, and 150 miles north of Memphis, Tennessee. In 1940, the population of Cape Girardeau was around 19,000 people. William Huffman was a minister of the Red Star Baptist Church in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. He started working for the church earlier that year. He was described as an honorable man. On a spring evening in mid-April 1941, the Huffman family was at home. They lived in town. William, his wife, Floyd, their two sons, Guy and Wayne, as well as their daughter-in-law, were at home. William, 52, Floyd, 43, Guy, 24, and Wayne, 22. Guy and his wife were expecting a child due in the next few weeks. The phone rang sometime between 9 o'clock and 9.30 that night. William answered the phone, and the sheriff's deputy was on the line. He told William that there was a plane crash outside of town and asked if he would be available to come help the people involved. Of course, William said yes, and he was told they would send a car for him very soon. After a while, the car arrived. William got into this vehicle, which wasn't a police car, and the vehicle headed out of town. The drive was about 10 to 15 miles. They came upon a wooded area and William knew he was in the right place because the area was surrounded by firefighters, police officers, and photographers. The deputy approached William and asked if he could give last rites to three passengers that didn't survive the crash. William expected to see a small aircraft, but that is not what he found. He saw a craft. It definitely wasn't an airplane, at least, it wasn't like any airplane he had ever seen before. It was a saucer, disc-shaped, very shiny, metallic in color with no seams. A portion of the craft was missing or broken off and he was able to see inside. There was a small chair made of a metal material. There were gauges and dials like nothing he had ever seen before. There was also markings inside the craft which looked like hieroglyphics or Egyptian symbols. William was then taken to the victims of the crash. There were three bodies lying on the ground. They were non-human, very small bodies, looking childlike, approximately four feet long, large heads with large, dark, oval-shaped eyes, very small mouths and slits for ears, no lips, no nose, just holes, and no hair on their bodies. The bone structure of these bodies were very odd. 
The bodies looked extremely soft with not much bone structure. The hands on the bodies were extremely long with long fingers, possibly only three or four instead of five. Two bodies were just outside the craft and another was a little farther away. Perhaps the two died on impact, but the third may have survived and moved away from the craft before perishing. There was talk about a ball of fire and evidence of a possible fire around the crash site, but the bodies were not burned. In fact, they had no visible injuries. They seemed to be dressed in what looked like wrinkled aluminum foil. William prayed over the bodies and gave the last rites. Last rites are usually given when a person is dying, but can also be performed after death. Something like this was possibly said that night. Through this holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. John 14 verses 2 through 3. The Lord Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you and I will come again to take you to myself. At one point, two men lifted up one of the bodies. The men stood on each side of it and reached under the arms to lift it up. Then they lifted the arms straight out. No one knew it at the time, but someone in the area had a camera and took a photo at that exact moment. By this time, more people had arrived on scene. They looked to be military personnel or possibly FBI. They began taking people aside and talking to them. William couldn't hear what was being said, but at one point, William was taken aside and told, this didn't happen. You didn't see this. This is national security. It is never to be talked about again. Soon after, William left and was taken back home. Can you imagine what would be going through your mind on that 15 mile drive back home? Questioning everything you just encountered. A possible spacecraft? Possible non-human bodies? I would be scared of not only what I saw, but also knowing that a government agency also knew that I saw everything. William arrived home and spoke to his wife and sons. His daughter-in-law was already asleep for the night. He told them exactly what he had encountered and witnessed that evening. A few weeks later, a man from his congregation, who was also on the scene that night, approached William. He handed William a photo. The photo was of the two men holding up the body. He said that he had the original photo, but thought it would be wise that someone else had a copy of the photo as well. William never spoke a word or told another soul about what happened on that April evening of 1941. William died at the age of 71 on September 15, 1959. He is buried at the Lebanon Cemetery in Missouri. Remember, William told his wife and two sons about his experience. His youngest son, Gordon Wayne Huffman, was a sergeant in the military. He died a few years later on January 28, 1944. He is buried in a military cemetery in England. I assume he was a casualty of World War II. William's oldest son, Guy, died almost 15 years after his father on March 7, 1974. He had at least two daughters. One daughter was born May 3, 1941, just a few weeks after the crash that changed his father's life. William's wife, Floyd, survived her husband and her two sons. She lived until the age of 86. She died September 16, 1984. We will get into the circumstances surrounding her death shortly. William's granddaughter, Charlotte Mann, was born years after the events of 1941, but her sister was born just a few weeks later. 
Charlotte remembers hearing bits and pieces of the crash incident while growing up. She was never told the story directly, but heard others discussing it in her presence. At some point, William gave his son Guy, Charlotte's father, the photo from that night. She recalls seeing the old photo at a dinner party when her father pulled it out to show his friends. This is a sketch done by Charlotte of what she remembers from the photograph. Here is a more detailed sketch of what she remembers of the alien body. At some point, her father lent that photo to a friend and he never saw that friend or photo ever again. In 1984, William and his two sons had already passed away and Charlotte never heard the whole story of what happened that evening back in 1941. Charlotte's grandmother, Floyd, was living with her at the time. Floyd was dying of cancer. Charlotte knew that if she wanted to hear the whole story, she would have to hear it from her grandmother. Otherwise, it would be lost forever. So she asked her grandmother to tell her what happened to her grandfather back in 1941. Charlotte said they had a frank conversation. Over the next few days, Floyd told the exact story that we have discussed. She also mentioned that people who were there that night were intimidated, scared, and paranoid. Floyd died a few days later. At some point, a UFO investigator named Leonard Stringfield got involved. He began investigating the crash. He wanted to see if there were any other witnesses or if any of the details of the story could be corroborated. He did find two other witnesses. Charlotte's sister validated the account. He also found a relative of the Cape Girardeau County Sheriff from 1941. This gentleman also remembered hearing about the crash of a spaceship with little people inside. Stringfield was also able to find records that William Huffman was a minister at the church during this time. The family moved from the area a few years later in 1944. He also found an account in the fire department records of a plane crash in the area during this time. However, there was no mention of alien bodies, but it did mention that military personnel removed the debris from the crash site. And it also mentioned that members of the fire department were sworn to secrecy by these military officers. That does seem odd if this was truly a typical plane crash. Why so much secrecy? Stringfield wrote about his findings and published it in a book called UFO Crash Retrievals The Inner Sanctum. So what truly happened that evening in April of 1941? I see six possible scenarios. Number one, it was truly a plane crash and either William was confused by what he saw or he exaggerated what happened when he told his family that night. But why do this? If it was a plane crash, people died and he gave them their last rites. Why would he come home hours later and make a joke about it to his family? I sincerely doubt this was the case. And I don't think he would confuse a plane crash with human victims for a spacecraft with alien bodies. Number two, there was no plane crash or alien spacecraft. Maybe something else happened that night. Maybe William left the house that night for another reason, a reason he didn't want to tell his family about. And he came home that night with this tall tale. Number three, remember, this was during World War II. Could there have been a military aircraft that crashed that night? That would explain why the military was there and why they swore everyone to secrecy. But that doesn't explain the small bodies that had so many non-human details. Number four, Charlotte, the granddaughter, got the entire story from her dying grandmother. Before this, Charlotte had allegedly seen the alien photo and heard bits and pieces of a story. 
However, Charlotte heard the story from her grandmother, who had no personal knowledge of the events, just the story that she heard from her husband some 43 years earlier. Had the story been exaggerated over the years to the story we hear today? Number five, Charlotte, the granddaughter, is making the whole thing up. However, there doesn't seem to be much motivation to lie. She has never sought money or fame for her story. Number six, it was truly a spacecraft that crashed that night and three bodies, not of this world, were discovered. Charlotte and her sister heard the story from their grandmother and heard bits and pieces from their father while growing up. There was another person, the sheriff's relative, who remembers hearing about this event as well. Plus, remember that the vehicle that picked up William that night to take him to the plane crash was black and unmarked. I am unsure whether unmarked police cars were common around this time, but I doubt they were common in a small town. So if it wasn't the local police that picked William up, then who was it? Also, what happened to the photo that was taken that night? Apparently Guy gave it to a friend and the friend and the photo were never seen again. Some speculate that this was a government informant that took the photo to either destroy it or turn it over to the authorities. Maybe there are more than these possible scenarios. Do you think there is a possible different scenario? What do you think happened that April evening of 1941? Do you think there was a UFO which crashed in Missouri six years before the Roswell incident that the military covered up? Or do you think this story is just that, a story? Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button so I will know you enjoy hearing about unsolved mysteries. Also, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you will be notified of my future videos. And follow me on social media as well to see what I am working on next. As always, have a wonderful day. Watch out for each other and keep looking for that missing link. Love ya and see you in my next video.